It is no secret. Japan is trying to become a cashless society. For the past year, I have heard the word cashless society in countless discussions and debates. A country that is striving to become a cashless society will try to decrease the amount paid in banknotes and encourage transactions that are done electronically. There are many ways to pay cashless. There are debit cards that pay straight from the bank account, credit cards that allows you to borrow money and hold a balance, prepaid cards that you can charge with money and then pay, and lastly, mobile paying, which is also the transaction method that has become more and more popular in Japan during the last year. For many years, Japan has been a society where cash is the king. According to a study that was conducted by the Ministry of Economy in 2016, only 20% of the transactions in Japan were cashless. This is distinguishedly low compared to other developed countries. It's not that Japanese don't have credit cards available. In fact, JCB published a study that in 2017, 84% of citizens held a credit card and one person held on average 3.2 cards. There are many speculations as why Japanese prefer to use cash. Some of which are because Japan is safer than other countries, so holding cash poses less risk, or because Japan is an aged society with more older people who might prefer cash. Or maybe because the interest rates are so low that there is little merit to depositing cash to one's bank account. Whatever the reason, it is evident that Japan is lagging behind other countries when it comes to the cashless movement. To catch up with other countries and truly make Japan a cashless society, the Ministry of Economics organized a campaign starting from October 2019, which continues until June 2020, where consumers can receive 2 or 5% discount should they pay cashless. The discount is in effect paid by the government, as well as the installation of the POS devices needed to facilitate these transactions. It doesn't matter whether the consumer pays with credit, debit, prepaid card or mobile, as long as the transaction is cashless, the total is reduced by 2% in franchise stores and 5% in other stores. Gaining popularity from this cashless campaign, many mobile payment applications have entered the market. There is LinePay, RaktenPay, MerPay, OrigamiPay, PixivPay, YuchoPay, and the most original called PayPay. These applications work using the popular QR code technology, where merely scanning the code is sufficient to receive or send a payment. Should these applications not suffice, one can also opt for the Google or Apple Pay, that work via NFC. The technology for cashless payments has existed for many decades. So why the sudden rush? The Ministry of Economy claims that the reason for going cashless is the increased convenience for consumers, as it makes paying easier, while automating the record keeping for purchases to help control spending budgets. In addition to this, they claim that going cashless will increase productivity, as the effort that went into handling cash can be eliminated. Cashless payment options can also allegedly allow companies to increase demand from foreigners, as foreigners are more accustomed to cashless transactions. And lastly, the Ministry of Economy claims that the data that is generated from consumer purchases can be leveraged to use in precise marketing instruments. These can all be valid reasons for going cashless, but there are some potential downsides that I feel are not being mentioned which we should be aware of. Recording, storing and sharing financial transaction data is a power that is ripe for abuse. Consider all the things you purchased for the last year. Now imagine that someone could know when and where you made those purchases and you can understand how accurately they could profile you 
and the various malicious ways this information could be used. We can already see how this kind of system has played out in China, where if you are blacklisted in the social credit application, you can lose the ability to buy train or plane tickets. We might like to think that our governments are more ethical and would never trample on individual liberties like this. But can we make the same assertion for years into the future? Once a system like the social credit in China has been established, the switch to a digital dictatorship is always only a push of a button away. Even if the situation never degrades to this point, it is much more likely that our financial data will be feasted on by corporations that can utilize this information to target us with advertisements. You gotta tell me exactly how to stop these targeted ads. It's, it's, it's driving me crazy. Yes, it is possible to use this data ethically. But in the end, which do you think the corporations value more? Our well-being or their bottom lines? Another potential negative downside to cashless society is the added economical burden. Let me explain what I mean by this. When we buy something in the store and pay with cash, there generally isn't additional fees. If an apple costs $2, you pay $2, of course with the added value-added tax. However, when paying with a credit card, it is not uncommon that a middleman, usually called Mastercard or Visa, takes a cut. Sometimes the merchant holds this burden onto themselves, but sometimes they can pass it on to the consumer. It is quite naive to think that if we transitioned to a fully cashless society, the middlemen facilitating these transactions, whether card companies or mobile app providers, would offer their services for free. But at this point, when paying with cash is no longer an option, we would have very little discourse and could end up paying a small fee every time we make a purchase. Another potential economic burden that gets little attention is the implementation of a negative deposit rates. Simply put, the traditional economic wisdom has been that when we face a recession, the central bank cuts the rates roughly 5% to ease lending and stimulate economic activity. Before the great financial crisis of 2008 and 9, just the idea that interest rates could be negative was absurd. Who would lend money if the amount they got back in the future would be smaller than what they lent? Today countries in Europe and Japan have made it a new normal to have negative interest rates. Having negative interest rates makes it more difficult for banks to generate revenue through treasury bonds and other lending activity. As I have mentioned in my previous videos, the interest rates for depositors today are close to zero, but at least they are not on the minus side. It has been forecasted that at some point the banks might have to implement negative interest rates on depositors' accounts, which would mean that you have to pay the bank for keeping your money there. There are already multiple studies and working papers by the IMF and others on how to implement these negative rates and most seem to utilize the concept of digital money. If you can't withdraw your money in cash, what can you do when the bank flips the interest rates to minus? These were some potential ways that the cashless system could be abused. I don't think that there is nothing inherently wrong with going cashless. Technology in itself is not good or bad. It is only a tool for achieving a goal that we ourselves set. This is why I think the technology we are going to use for our financial transactions should be democratized and decentralized in a way that no central party can start abusing this immense power. Cryptocurrencies and decentralized finance hold a lot of hope in these aspects, but have still to clear some technological and educational hurdles in order to be implemented. Maybe I will go into more detail about this in the future videos. That is all for today's video. I hope you learned something about the Japan's cashless society situation. If I forgot to mention something, please tell me in the comment section. I always appreciate this kind of communication. See you in the next video.